Viola was uh, fortuitously the mother of my partner Paul Sills. Paul and Charlie Jacobs and I started Compass together. And uh, she came from the West Coast willing to give a workshop which involved dozens of young actors in Chicago. She put them through like a week of her theater games and from that group we chose six people with whom we wanted to go. That was the cast. And it was interesting that the, because the, the genesis of this whole thing was uh, in, in good part based on the, uh, the work of Paul's mother, Viola Spolin, who was an extraordinary woman. I met her relatively late in her life, but she, she was extraordinary. And she worked mostly with kids and with amateurs in settlement houses and, and YMCA's. I do remember how much I learned from her and the intensity of those sessions because it was kind of comical in a way because we would get into those group meetings. Viola would, would be leading them and Severn would be pacing with a handkerchief in his mouth and looking frustrated and everything because I don't think he believed in any of it. He just believed in being Severn. He went out there and he was chaos, you know what I mean? He was. <laughs> something out of, uh, as I say, data. But she really laid down the law. And we, let's say we were working on an exercise for, uh, she called it where, your environment. Was it an office, was it a church, police department, fire, whatever, a park scene or whatever. So what we did in our minds made with the agreement of another person, that was another thing she emphasized, agreement, remember that? We used to do agreement exercise. You could not disagree with somebody. You had to come out there and anything they said, you picked up positively, positively, but you changed it. Teaching what came to be called, wasn't originally called, the theater games, which were a series of so-called games which were quickly learned, but which encouraged the students uh, to use their imagination, uh, to listen to what other students said, to inhabit an imaginary environment, all of those things. So we would work on where we'd come out. And the first thing you had to do was to use every object in the room, chair, sofa, window, you had to open the window, turn on the heater, you had to uh, answer the phone, whatever you had established in the scene and justify it the call was coming for the other person, or you talked to somebody, had to open a window, you were stifling, whatever. And she, and she developed several people who were in the company who were brilliant at that. Dick Shaw was fantastic at it, and his wife, it wasn't his wife then, or maybe it was Valerie Harper, was also fabulous at that. I, coming from the Stanislavski tradition of training of actors, was very, very wary of pouring tea into imaginary cups and smoking imaginary cigarettes and uh, making imaginary places. And of course, the people watching, if it was an audience, they wouldn't know what was going on, but they would find it interesting. They'd be drawn into behavior. Whereas with her, with us, us watching, we knew what the exercise was, and we used to roar with people would go walk through somebody's table they had set, set up. And Elaine was a tops at calling somebody for that. You'd walk through her table, she'd let you know. You just walk through my table and violated every rule. But Viola stuck us to that. And then when we were over, she said, did they use their wear people? And Severn would throw up his hands and take the handkerchief out and said, you can't use the word in that context. He would be arguing with her, maybe on philosophical grounds. But she, by persisting, got us, you know. And then, of course, that all changed. 